Welcome back to another video. It's Coach Justin from Ultimate Baseball Training. And in today's video, we're going to go over some stealthy base running hacks that every player out there needs to know. Without further ado, let's just jump right into it. All right, so for this very first hack, we're at first base. And the first hack is I want you, when you're base running, to both at first base, take your lead and dive back to the back corner of the base. All right, so. Right here, I'm on the back corner of the base. I'm gonna take my lead like this, all right? And if that pitcher picks over for whatever reason, it should be, my distance should be a step and a dive back. So I would cross over this way and I would dive back towards that back corner of the base. So back here, back here like this. We don't wanna dive back towards the middle of the base. We don't wanna to dive towards the front of the base. And here's the reason why. Let me flip the script for you. This is probably the biggest reason why is Pretend I'm the first baseman, all right? So the first baseman, he's kind of standing here like this. He's looking at the pitcher, waiting for him to pick over. If you're out and you have your lead, and let's say you dive back towards either the middle or the front of the base instead of the back of the base, literally all this first baseman has to do, typically they're lefties, right, at first base, all he has to do is catch the ball and apply the tag and you're out. All he has to do is catch it and go straight down, directly down to apply the tag and you're out. But if you slide towards the back corner of the base, what he has to do is not only catch the baseball, but he can't go straight down because you're not here. You're out here. So what he has to do is he has to catch it and he has to actually reach, bend over, and he has to reach to try to get you. So it's a further distance for him to catch the ball and then apply the tag when you dive back towards the back corner of the base. Okay, so that's just good baseball. That's the very first hack. Hopefully you've heard this, but if not, this is something you need to apply right away. So we're looking at our third base coach, we get our sign, right? And then boom, off the back corner of the base. All right, we get to a, a good distance where we feel like we're out enough, right? And if he picks over, again, should be a crossover step, not a jab step, it should be a crossover step and a dive. That's the distance. Take your lead off the back, dive back to the back. That's really gonna help you out. All right, so let's jump into the next hack. I just looked at the third base coach and he put on a steal, right? So we're stealing on this particular pitch if the pitcher goes to the plate, all right? So I take my lead and this hack, this is an issue that I see with a lot of younger players, right? Let's say that I'm in my ready position, the pitcher goes to the plate, so it's my time to steal. What I see is players take that first step or those first few steps and what they actually do is they're looking into the hitting zone because they want to see the action, right? They want to see what the catcher is going to do. Are they going to be safe? Are they going to get thrown out? But that's, that's a huge problem because when you start out, you want to start out like a sprinter. If you watch a sprinter in the Olympics, they start out and they tuck their chin down, they tuck their chin, and they stay low to the ground their first several steps because what that does is that creates a good angle for you to run. You're not fast when you're running straight up and down like this. You're fast when you're running at an angle. When we stay low out of the gate, we maintain that power angle for a longer period of time. And so that's a big issue. The hack is look at your target for the first several steps until you get to full speed. And then when you're full speed, when you're halfway, if you want to take a quick peek in with your eyes, don't fully turn your head because your body follows what your head does. But if you're halfway there and you want to take a quick peek with your eyes, I'm totally fine with that. But just be sure that those first couple steps when you take off, you shouldn't be looking in the hitting zone like this because you're going to because you're looking that direction, you're going to rise up. You're not going to be at your fastest. We want to tuck our chin. We want to get down the line. That's how you're going to steal more bases. Now for this next hack, we moved over to third base. And this hack is more so a golden rule of baseball, but it's something you need to know, especially if you've never heard this before. Never make the first or the third out at third base. All right. Now you might be saying why you never want to make an out anywhere. What's the big deal about not making the first or third at third base? Well, Here's the deal, scoring position, obviously second base, right? And so with nobody out, if you crush a ball, let's say in the right center gap, and it's a for sure double, but you could possibly stretch it into a triple, but you might get thrown out, your best bet and what your third base coach should tell you to do is hold up and be at second base with a stand up double. The reason being is because then you are at second base with nobody out and the next guy, the next hitter, can either move you over, 
and then you've got one out to try to score this run from third base, or he can get a base hit and you're already in scoring position. So as soon as he hits that ball, let's say he hits a ground ball in between the first and the second baseman, you've already got a good secondary lead, you're going to score regardless. And so it makes no sense to get thrown out trying to stretch it into a triple and then all of a sudden you've got one out and nobody on base and you basically just killed an inning, right? So it's much better to start for sure double, don't make that first out at third base and then you don't want to make the third out at third base because same thing, second base is scoring position so it's fine if we have two outs and a runner in scoring position because a base hit drives them in. If you're at third base, even if you make it third base with two outs, it doesn't even matter. The, the hitter cannot hit a sack fly to drive you in because that would be out number three, right? So he has to get a base hit. Well, if he gets a base hit, you would have scored anyway from second base. So hopefully that's making some sense. You never want to make the first or third out at third base. All right, so moving on, we're still at third base. I've got another really good hack for you. Again, this is something that you should know. Every baseball player, every base runner should know this, but sometimes it's not taught. Before we get into the hack, first of all, what should your lead look like from third base? Because we're gonna get into something important in just a minute, but you gotta take your, your lead first, right? So this is a, a thing that I see all the time, especially with younger players, little leaguers up to the high school age. I see them leading off third base like they're a little leaguer like this. And if you watch a major league game, that's not how guys take their lead from third base. And this is not how they stand at third base either. All right, so that's what not to do. What should we actually do? To start things off, we are gonna be in foul territory. We're looking at the third base coach, getting our sign, seeing if anything's on. And then once the pitcher kind of gets his sign and he comes set, you're basically gonna just kind of start floating off the base like this. We do not wanna get picked off at third base, so we're not really stretching this lead into something crazy. We're just kind of hovering a few feet off, easily able to get back if he picks over, right? So we kind of float off like this, and then our secondary lead at third base, what it looks like is it's a three-step lead, okay? So it's actually gonna be, the footwork is gonna be, I don't care if you're a righty or a lefty, it's gonna be right, left, right. Okay, so I'm floating off like this, I can still get back. I'm just relaxed though, I'm not all like this, I'm relaxed, and then my footwork is as he starts going to the plate, right, left, right. And this position here is an athletic position. I've sunk down, I'm low to the ground, and I can either hopefully ball in the dirt, ball gets away from the catcher, I can boom, I can advance, or, right, left, right, up, oh, the throw's coming back, I can quickly get back. And so that third step should be uh, when the ball is crossing the plate, when it's in the hitting zone, but you wanna make sure it's right, left, right, so that third step is with your right foot, so if the catcher does pick over, you can get back in this position, but if it's your left foot, good luck getting back. So that was how to get off the base and take our lead. Now let's get into the hack, and that hack is you wanna go down in foul territory on this side of the line and back in fair territory. And here's the reason why, all right? So we, we hover off the base, I'm in foul territory right now, and then as I go to my right, left, right, I'm in foul territory because if that hitter hits a stinger, a hard line drive, and it comes back, and I turn like this and it hits me, it's fine if I'm in foul territory, but if I take that same lead and I'm in fair territory, the ball hit, hits me, that's interference, and I'm out, right? And so we wanna come down in foul territory, right, left, right, but then let's say the hitter, you know, just watches, takes that pitch, right, and the catcher gets the ball back. What we wanna do is we wanna step in like this. We're still looking at the catcher, and we wanna come back in fair territory like this, all right? The catcher's gonna make a throw that we're gonna get in the way of. If we're in fair territory, it's gonna be a much more difficult play if he decides to throw down to third base, okay? So down in foul, right, left, right. And if he picks right away, obviously we gotta get back to the base. But if he's just holding the ball, it's your normal play. Right, left, right, we wanna do is we wanna step in. Our eyes are on the catcher and boom, he starts throwing the ball back to the pitcher. We come back like this, and we start the process over again. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, do me a favor and please hit that like button for me. I'd really appreciate that. And also, if you haven't subscribed to our channel and joined the UBT family yet, please do so. Hit that subscribe button. Be sure your notifications are on because we're coming out with new videos all the time. In fact, every single week, and I don't want you to miss any of them. So those two things, hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully it was helpful for you and I'll see you next time.